This is the kind of chaos energy the videos used to have. What do you mean used to? One of the most expensive parts of having 3D printing as a hobby is actually getting started and buying your first 3D printer. So this week we're going to be taking a look at five 3D printers under $300 so you can get started affordably. I've been seeing a lot of comments recently where people are talking about saving up to buy their first 3D printer and I understand that situation entirely. It took me a really long time to pull the trigger when I bought my first machine several years ago and that was before printers were as affordable and widespread as they are now. When you're looking into the different kind of budget points of purchasing a 3D printer, the under $300 category now is actually kind of a banger. Is it a banger? So if you want to make cool things and you don't have a lot of money to spend, then you're probably going to be looking under $300. And that's what I want to help you find with this list. Our first entry is one that I think is actually a very underrated 3D printer, and it's been out for quite some time now, the Soval SV06. This machine is actually really reminiscent of the Prusa Mark III design. So you're going to have a machine that is very rigidly built because it is on linear rods for its motion system. It has a planetary direct drive extruder, so it's going to be able to do flexible materials really well. You get a PEI magnetic build plate, and this thing is now starting at $250. And right now is the time of filming. There's actually a coupon on Amazon to bring the price from $250 down to $200 even. And when you look at all the features that this thing is giving you for $200, the machine seems like a really solid deal. You have the ability to add a run out sensor so you're never running out of filament and your print getting ruined as a result. There is a really big community behind this one, which means that the mods are aplenty. So if you're a tinkerer and you wanna really soup your machine up, it's fantastic for that. The rigid frame and linear rods make it a perfect candidate for speed tuning, and you can print some pretty insanely fast benchies on this one. One thing that might be a drawback for some folks is going to be the screen. It uses an old school LCD display with a scroll knob, and personally, I don't mind that because instead of doing a bad touchscreen implementation, they gave you something that's tried and true, and it just works. But when we're talking about a $200 to $250 3D printer, it's really hard to beat the stock print quality, how quiet this thing is, and the 220 by 220 build volume. This thing is an absolute beast for its price point, and I think it punches way above its weight class. A printer that I've been absolutely enamored by since it came out, but just haven't had the ability to get my hands on for one reason or another is the Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro. This machine is going to have a 225 by 225 by 250 millimeter build volume. So it's going to be Ender 3 size and it's going to be a very much Ender 3 style printer. However, for its price tag of about $279, this thing is absolutely loaded to the gills with all sorts of bells and whistles and even some of the bells have their own whistles. What do you get for that price tag? Well, I already mentioned the build volume, which is pretty decent. It's going to be a great start, or for many people, it's the only size printer they ever need. You're going to get a direct drive extruder. There's an LED bar built into the top of the gantry, the crossbar that connects the two Z uprights. It's a dual Z lead screw machine, which is going to be a speed demon. It's capable of printing insanely fast and quiet. And one of the things that really absolutely drew me in about this machine is the fact that instead of using V wheels or linear rails or linear rods, it's using steel roller bearings. So you don't have to worry about the wear and tear of the V wheels and them forming grooves. Just keep it lubricated and this thing's gonna just absolutely truck on like a champ. The tool head has another light in it. And if you know me, you know that I am a big fan of the rule. If anything can light up, it absolutely should. So between the top brace and the tool head, having all this light is going to make it really easy to see your prints as they're happening, which is really cool if you like to film time lapses or just keep an eye on things. It runs Clipper firmware, so it's incredibly tunable by you, the user, and it's also going to be capable of having wireless printing happen, which means no having to fiddle with SD cards or flash drives. And oh my goodness, the amount of interfacing that I don't have to do with the printer is always a win. If my workflow consists of download the model from printables, slice, ship to the printer, and it's just going without having to physically walk up to and touch the machine, that is a huge win. Speaking of interacting directly with the machine, you're going to get a flexible build plate, which is going to make part removal incredibly easy. And in the chance that you have to do something with the screen, one thing that's really cool about what Elegoo did is the touch screen actually comes away from the machine 
attached by a length of cord. And it's designed to do that. So you don't have to just stand and hover over top of the machine like that kid in Toy Story. So for $279, when you can get a 3D printer that has an auxiliary part cooling fan to facilitate go fast speeds, the capability of printing up to 300 Celsius on the hot end, a flexible magnetic PEI build plate, and it runs Clipper just out of the gate and is absolutely loaded with lights. I think you should definitely be considering the Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro because this machine is pretty spectacular. All this talk about budget-friendly 3D printers is great. However, do you want a chance to win your own 3D printer for free? Well, we're running a giveaway right here on the channel until May 22nd to give away an Anycubic Cobra Go, a spool of new maker's filament, and a handcrafted 3D printing toolkit. So that way you have absolutely everything you need to get started printing completely for free. The rules of entry are you have to live in the continental United States, you have to be a subscriber to the channel, and you need to fill out the Google form, which is linked down below. So if you want a chance to win a 3D printer instead of buy one, Enter now. Taking the number three spot for our video is actually a machine that's been recommended to me by several viewers at this point, and I keep hearing more and more and more about it. It's the FlashForge Adventure 5M, not the Pro. This machine seems really, really interesting. Basically, it seems like FlashForge took their attempt at making the Bamboo P1 series printers and it seems really good, especially for the money. So on the Adventure 5M, you're going to get a Core XY machine with three Z lead screws. You're going to have linear rods for your X and Y motion system, and this thing is an absolute speed demon. Like the bamboo machines, it comes out of the box, fully assembled, and is ready to go within about 10 minutes. In terms of actually printing with the machine, you can use a USB stick or you can actually use wireless connection. It doesn't run Clipper or Marlin. It seems like FlashForge did their own firmware for this machine. However, it does seem that they've recently opened it up for the Clipper add-on. And when you look at the $299 price tag of this machine, it seems like something that might be worth picking up to experiment with for future videos because I've had a lot of people tell me that they're really interested in this one and I think we should probably check it out to make some content. While it doesn't come fully enclosed and ready to do high temp materials in that manner, it does have the ability for you to actually print and make your own enclosures, just like you would if you had a bamboo P1P, which I think is a really cool idea. It allows you to put some personality and customization into anything and just really have a lot of fun with it. Where FlashForge teams to really separate themselves from the competition is in their hot end assembly. So they actually have a lever on the side of the tool head or a button which is basically a quick release nozzle system so in theory this should be some of the fastest nozzle changes that you can have which would potentially even rival a revo and that's really really intriguing especially if you don't want to have to deal with using a lot of tools to change out your hot end or your nozzle similar to bamboo and machines running clipper this machine has its own version of input shaping or vibration compensation which is going to help reduce ringing and make your models just look that much better, really highlighting those details and getting rid of some really avoidable defects, especially with the technology that we have available to us right now. At $299, a Core XY machine with a build volume of 220 by 220 by 220 that's capable of being fully enclosed is a really attractive offer to me, and I think we're going to need to add one of these to the roster for some content in the future. Now, you didn't think that we could have a top five list of budget-friendly 3D printers without a visit from Creality and and Ender 3, did you? Because if you did, you were really wrong. So that's why the next entry on our list is actually the Ender 3 V3 SE. Yeah, that's a lot of name. In 2023, Creality announced and released three Ender 3 variants. However, the Ender 3 V3 SE is the standout one for me. And the reason the SE, which is how I'll be referring to it from this point on, is the one that piqued my interest the most is because it's the most affordable. It's regularly priced at around $199 US. And for that $199, you're getting a machine that has a 220 by 220 by 250 build volume, direct drive extruder using the Creality Sprite system, which I really enjoy on my Ender 3 S1, Magnetic build plate, which is pretty well standard at this point, 
It's going to have automatic Z offset calibration using a strain gauge. And then it'll use the CR touch, which is Creality's take on the BL touch from AntLab. Basically, the SE takes every upgrade and every feature that the average user would put onto an old school under three, and they made it standard for one uniform price tag. The screen is even the same type of full color scroll wheel controlled screen that we had on the Ender 3 V2 a few years back. And I think at $199, it's really an affordable machine. The Ender 3s are always just smash hits from Creality because of their affordability and their huge community behind them. There are tons of users picking these machines up because of the price point. And what that means is, there's also a lot of people in the modding community for these machines, which make it a very good tinkering project. So if you're picking up a printer that can also be a project on its own, this would be a great starting point. It already has a lot of the fun upgrades, but if you want to take it over the top and add something like a filament runout sensor, which Creality offers, or add Clipper using a Raspberry Pi or Creality's Clipper screen, then that's a fantastic way to do it and you're still going to come in under the price tag of several other machines. They brought it into 2023 slash 2024. And I think one of my favorite upgrades they threw onto this is you actually have linear rods on the Y-axis, so the bed is even more stable, which is going to help facilitate faster printing and a more rigid frame. So I think that this is going to be the standout Ender 3 variant for the next couple of years. I want to give a special shout out to our level three and four channel members. Deanna Duffy, Nathan Wolford, and Snail3D. Thank you guys immensely. Your support goes a very long way to helping to fund the channel and all the videos that we're producing. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment which 3D printer you're most interested in. And if you've enjoyed a couple of our videos, be sure to subscribe because that's the absolute best way that you can help the video grow. And if you have a friend who is on the fence about 3D printing, be sure to share it with them. Rounding out our list, coming in at number one, will not be a surprise to very many people unless you're very new to 3D printing. And that's going to be the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. No, I don't have an affiliate link. No, I'm not compensated. I just genuinely love my bamboo machines. There is a reason that between myself and Cameraman Bo, we have four of them. And that's because they're just great machines. And the A1 Mini might be my favorite printer right now. It is fast as all get out. It is super quiet. It has active motor noise cancellation, which means you don't hear the steppers when the thing is printing, even at its blistering fast speeds. The most noise that it makes are the little beeps and chirps that it makes, and you can turn those off. The fan noise is there, but this thing is just blazing fast. It's wireless, which means you can just print directly from the Bamboo Studio app on your computer. You can use the Maker World functionality in the Bamboo Handy app on your phone to print pre-sliced print files. It has a textured build plate with it from the factory. The nozzles are some of the easiest to change on any 3D printer that I've ever seen, no tools required. And the price point is only $249. That's the normal price of the A1 Mini now. So if you're wanting to get into 3D printing, you want something that's just going to print, you don't care about mods and upgrades and tinkering, you just want to make cool stuff, the A1 Mini, full stop, is the printer for you. If your goal is to come in under $300 to buy your machine, at $249, that gives you enough room to buy a printer and then a couple spools of filament so that way you can really just be off to the races running. This thing doesn't take up a lot of table space and it's adorable. It uses a single Z axis and the lead screw is fully enclosed to help keep it clean. It's called a cantilever style printer because there's the only single Z post coming straight up out of the printer. Everything is going to run on some really beefy linear rails to help it reach these top speeds very effectively with very little noise. The machine comes equipped with automatic bed leveling. You don't have to ever worry about setting your Z offset. It just does it on its own. It has active flow calibration. This printer has so many sensors that its sensors have sensors and you don't have to worry about tweaking and tuning. The profiles inside of Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer generate some just absolutely gorgeous prints without very much user intervention at all. And if you're somebody who's into maybe getting into something a little bit more complicated like multicolor printing, well, you can actually just upgrade the A1 Mini and get the AMS Lite. 
Or if your budget for the printer itself was $249 and you had a little bit of wiggle room for tools and accessories, you can get it in a combo pack with the AMS light for $399. $399 gets you a blazing fast silent printer with a 170 by 170 by 170 millimeter build volume and the ability to print up to four colors at once. That was unheard of two years ago. And now it's cheap, at least in terms of 3D printers. And now I did just say this machine has a 170 millimeter cube build volume, which is perhaps its biggest downside. But if you're just 3D print curious and you're maybe just wanting to try it out and you're not 100% sure if you're ready to go all in on the hobby, then that $249 price tag and that smaller build volume might be the way to go for you because the machine just, it does everything for you without you having to really worry about it. And if you find that 3D printing isn't for you, you're not out nearly as much as if you purchased a P1P, P1S, or even an X1 Carbon. You're only out $249, which chances are you could recoup reselling this thing on Facebook Marketplace, at least for the most part. So while it's small, it's speedy and it is mighty. The A1 Mini just absolutely comes out of the gate swinging. And if you're somebody who's maybe batching off a lot of prints and you're thinking about starting up a small print farm for Etsy or craft fairs, something to that effect, then definitely think about the A1 Mini because for less than the price of one Prusa Mini, you can buy two A1 Minis. And that means you have double the print output. More printers is always faster than one fast printer and the only thing that's faster than more printers is more fast printers. If 3D printing is the game that you want to get into, and budget-friendly is the name you have to adhere to, hopefully we helped you make a decision today. And if we did, I feel pretty good about things. 3D printing is absolutely one of my favorite things in the world. It has helped me in so many different kinds of ways, and I really want to be able to facilitate and share that love with as many people as possible, and that's part of why we do videos like this to help and educate and showcase a few printers at one time to help people make informed buying decisions. So I do hope that this at least got you curious and maybe you're gonna watch some additional content on several of these machines and I hope you pick up a 3D printer because we need more makers.